Ah, yes, the beach. The place that I wanted to be all winter long. And I'm finally here, and I got to say, it's not even close to what I had hoped it would be. And I'm not trying to say that it's all bad either. I mean, after all, it's the beach. It's a wonderful place to be. It's not the fact that it's a beach. It's that you're camping on the beach. You are boondocking, better yet, on the beach. And not staying in some lush hotel that's slightly off the beach that has showers and those types of facilities. And honestly, it's a wonderful place to be. I'm not going to try and take that away from anyone that has always dreamed or hoped of staying at a beach in their camper. But the thing of it is, is that there are a few things that you're not told when you go to the beach or that you probably haven't even thought of. You're still caught up in the magic of actually being there that maybe these things just slipped your mind or everyone else forgot to inform you. The first and most obvious thing that I think I should probably point out is the fact that it's sandy there. And if you're trying to conserve water or if you don't have a whole lot of it on board in your camper, there's not going to be any real place in order to rinse off your feet after you've had a nice little frolic on the beach. You'll have tried to wash as much off as you possibly can in the water and then you have to walk back across the beach back to your rig and then it's all on your floor. So without a doubt, the thing that I felt like I was doing the most of while at the beach was sweeping out my rig. The next obvious thing is the tide. The tide is always coming in, especially at the ocean. So if you're not used to the sound of the ocean constantly crashing just outside your door, it can actually get quite annoying. Most people think that it's very romantic. They have a constant white noise going on all the time. Uh, I must say that that was not my experience. Not to mention, if the tide comes in very far, there's a really good chance it could wash the sand completely underneath your rig and trap you there. And there's a few other places that sand could creep into probably won't be the highlight of your trip either. Am I right, ladies? But it's not all bad. I mean, I actually really enjoy the beach. I love the feeling of the sand in between my toes, and I like getting up every morning and taking Duncan for a walk down onto the seashore to see maybe what cool new things had washed up onto the beach overnight. And those warm days, getting out, laying underneath the sun, getting a tan, all those things are very positive aspects of being on a beach. But the one thing that I haven't discussed yet is the salt. I mean, we're just going to have to face it. We live in a very metallic, mechanical world. A lot of our stuff has metal parts on them. And honestly, I'll be perfectly honest. I had no idea that there was that much salt in the air on the Gulf of Mexico. I thought you had to be like right on an ocean in order to get the level of salt in the air that was needed to basically start rusting all of your stuff. Uh, but within three short days, I mean everything, everything began to rust. I started seeing little flakes of rust on the frame of the camper, on the frame of my truck, and especially on the exposed parts of my motorcycle because that's what I was riding up and down the beach all the time with. But despite all the problems, despite all the things that could potentially go wrong, I would say do not let it dissuade you from at least experiencing what it's like to actually go out there and camp on the beach with your rig. Yes, it can be a bit scary, yes, it can be a bit annoying, and yes, it can be a bit frustrating with all the sand always in your rig, always sweeping, but it's all part of the experience. You can't have the good without the bad, you can't have the bitter without the sweet. So get out there, soak up that sun, and let me know how it goes for you.